Let's talk about the Steelers free agency so far up to this point. I love everything that this team has done. Now, one of the decisions I am a little bit 50-50 on, but the man you see on your screen right now is Omar Khan. Give that man his flowers because he has been working so far this whole fragrancy period. The Steelers need to get some quarterback competition, as Mike Tomlin said. They got quarterback competition in Russell Wilson. Mason Rudolph will no longer be with the team. He is now the backup with the Tennessee Titans. I wish him the best moving forward because he did amazing in those last three regular season games, and he did a very good job against the Buffalo Bills as well, and it was time for him to get a change of scenery. But you look at what Omar Khan's been able to do. Talking to Patrick Queen, trading Deontay Johnson, let's get straight into it. The first move is obviously Russell Wilson. You get this guy for pennies on a dollar. You got him for the veteran minimum. If Russell Wilson is a horrible quarterback, the Steelers are not paying him that much money anyway. Kenny Pickett will essentially be the second quarterback to Russell Wilson on the depth chart. They're going to have a quote-unquote competition. We know who is more than likely going to win that battle. And it's more than likely going to be Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson, solid quarterback. I think that he has a lot left in his tank. He got put into a bad situation with the Denver Broncos. When he first arrived to the Denver Broncos, they had Nathaniel Hackett there as the head coach. The Denver Broncos wanted to use Nathaniel Hackett to basically bring in Aaron Rodgers. So they did not have those aspirations of bringing in Russell Wilson. And it was a horrible season for him. Let's not shy away from it. 16 passes touchdowns to 11 interceptions. That's terrible. For Russell Wilson and his standards, that's horrible. But he was also tied with being the most sacked quarterback in that time with Justin Fields. We fast forward to the season that just ended. They bring in Sean Payton and Russell Wilson did not look bad. He looked very good at certain points in times. Now, he did get exposed against the Detroit Lions. He did have a lot of hiccups against the New England Patriots as well. I'm not expecting for Russell Wilson to be a top 10 quarterback with the Steelers. But what the Steelers need is a quarterback to go in there and put the ball in the red zone. Russell Wilson can do that. 26 passing touchdowns this season. That's more than the passing touchdowns that Kenny Pickett has had in his entire career. And I fully understand Kenny Pickett has missed games due to ankle issues. He's missed games in his rookie season because he sat down a couple games behind Mr. Bisky. However, you want to look at it, six passing touchdowns to four interceptions in 12 games, that's not good enough. Russell Wilson can push this team more towards being in that contender conversation than not. And look at what this team was able to do. You had Matt Canada calling plays. He was terrible. You can say what you want to say about Arthur Smith. I, I still have my question marks about Arthur Smith. I really do. But the last time we saw him as offensive coordinator, he did a very good job with the Tennessee Titans. He had Ryan Tannehill look like a top quarterback in the AFC. I expect for him to come over, give this team a change of scenery, and to put them into a better situation. This team made the playoffs with having Matt Canada calling plays. Mason Rudolph playing games for them, Kenny Pickett playing games for them, and that horrible quarterback in Mitch Trubisky. I can lump him into the same category with a guy like Kenny Pickett. They're both terrible, in my opinion. Mitch Trubisky is just worse because he's going to turn the football over. He's no longer with this team. So the fact that you made the NFL playoffs dealing with that horrible offense for a majority of the season, I expect for them to be better with Russell Wilson. You add Russell Wilson in with this run game with Najee Harris and Jalen Warren, I think that they'll be in a better situation with this upcoming season. I'm not really worried about the Baltimore Ravens per se because the Steelers have had their number, especially Lamar Jackson's number, in the last couple of years. You can worry about teams like the Cleveland Browns. You can worry about teams like Cincinnati Bengals as well. But the fact is the Steelers went 5-1. and one. In this division, this season, they only lost one game, and that game was against the Cleveland Browns. Besides that, they went out there and they took care of business within their own division, and I love that for the Steelers. Now, another move that Omar Khan has made in this phrasey period is going out there and getting Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen is a solid linebacker. I like this. This is something the Steelers had to go do. They had to go out there and target another inside linebacker. Now, did they overpay for Patrick Queen? You can say that. Because Patrick Queen, before Roquan Smith showed up, he wasn't looking like that first round pick with the Ravens. He caught on right when they made that trade for Roquan Smith, and Patrick Queen became a phenomenal linebacker with the team. This is a guy that can go out there and be a huge playmaker with the Steelers defense. I'm worried about him being the number one linebacker with this team, but at the same time, he has some great playmakers around him. TJ Watt had 19 sacks on the season. That's going to open some things up in the middle of defense for Patrick Queen if you want to send him on some blitzes. And especially if you have a man up on certain tight ends. You have Alice Highsmith as well. Only seven sacks this season, but the pressure rate was up. Had two interceptions, two forced fumbles. 
You have Cameron Hayward up there as well. He did not look the same this season. He was dealing with that groin injury that he suffered against the San Francisco 49ers, but he still had a lot of good moments this season. You have Keanu Benton as well, who has been a very good defense lineman with this team. He's going to continue to get better in the next couple of years. You have Nick Herbig as well, who is one of those rotational depth pieces behind TJ Watt. So I think that they have done a very good job of shredding up the front seven by adding in middle linebacker depth. And they needed to do this because Cole Holcomb, solid linebacker. I love his game. Omar, Omar Khan went out there and he acquired him in fragrancy last offseason. The problem with that is this. This kid has suffered injuries. Even back with the Washington Commanders, he can't stay healthy. Patrick Queen can. If Cole Holcomb can stay healthy, he suffered that knee injury against the Tennessee Titans. If he can stay healthy and you have Patrick Queen as well, that's a one-two punch at that inside linebacker spot. I love that for the Steelers. I think that you have two very good, solid linebackers in the middle of the field, and you haven't had consistency there since Ryan Shazier got injured against the Cincinnati Bengals a number of years ago. You drafted Devin Bush. You traded up in the first round to get Devin Bush. Phenomenal his rookie season. Towards ACL, after that, he became a draft bust with this team. So you going out there and getting more inside linebackers that helps out the team as a whole, that's a great thing for the Steelers. Then you also have guys like Landon Roberts, who is still in the roster as well, and who did a very good job on the back end of the season trying to fill in for those inside linebackers when guys like Cole Holcomb and Quan Alexander went down. Because do not forget, Quan Alexander was also a starting linebacker with this team before he tore his Achilles. So you just need to put the right pieces out there as a whole. And you look at the secondary as well. They traded Deontay Johnson. Now, this is the move that I'm 50-50 on. They traded a guy that has 717 receiving yards in the season. And he did not look amazing throughout the entire Kenny Pickett, Mr. Trubisky era. But we didn't expect for him to because it was bad quarterback play and bad offensive play calling. The reports are saying that he did not fit the system with Arthur Smith. We will see. But he was a very solid wide receiver with this team. When he was younger, early in his career, he struggled with a lot of drops. And he also had the bad moment against the Cincinnati Bengals when it was a fumble and he basically just walked off the field. He wasn't trying to hear it because he wanted the football more. I understand the frustrations, but he was basically cooked with this team. The reason why I'm 50-50, this was a guy that was great in getting separation deep down the field. And especially in those intermediate routes as well. You now have George Pickens and Calvin Austin III as your two top wide receivers. Calvin Austin III is not ready to be a number two wide receiver. George Pickens is a true number one. Pat Firemute is a straight-up baller at the tight end spot. But you're losing a guy like Deontay Johnson. That's a huge miss for the Steelers if they do not go out there and replace him. Now, as I record this video, they have not went through free agency, and they have not went out there, and they have not replaced him yet. They may go into the NFL draft and draft a wide receiver. The last couple of years, they have hit on the wide receiving spot even back decades ago. They drafted guys like Antonio Brown, Martavius Bryant, Juju Smith-Schuster. They drafted Deontay Johnson, George Pickens. So they have an eye for the wide receivers. Hopefully, they can draft a wide receiver in the second or third round. They could come in and give you big production immediately. But I do believe that Deontay Johnson will be missed on certain screen passes because what he can do in open field. But he had a lot of concentration issues with this team. But you bring in a cornerback and Dante Jackson. Now, Dante Jackson, I will say this right here. He's not this overhyped cornerback that some of the media is trying to make him seem to be like. This is a number two corner at best. Jordy Porter Jr. will be the number one corner with this team. And for the last five games of the season, Jory Porter Jr. did look better. It was just the holding penalties with this kid. And I do worry about that. He is a rookie. A lot of rookies do deal with the holding issues. It's the fact that he may be a step too slow to deal with guys like Zay Flowers and to deal with guys like Jamar Chase. We will see. I like Jory Porter Jr.'s game. I was hitting the table for him last year in the NFL draft. I thought he should have been a first-round pick. Instead, he slid to the second round. The still has gotten to the top of the second round. He looked very solid in his rookie season. The thing is with Dante Jackson, he struggled with injuries. And you look at his base numbers, he allowed 44 receptions for 496 receiving yards and three receiving touchdowns. Not terrible compared to some of the other corners, but he did miss time with the Carolina Panthers. He's a fast press man corner. In zone coverage, he will give up some big plays. And when he does give up those big plays, they usually go for touchdowns. He's not a horrible corner. Because we know this secondary has been through the works for the last couple of years with Mike Tomlin. Hopefully he can come in, he can stay healthy, and just give this team some solid reps. Because they did go out there and they did cut Patrick Peterson. Patrick Peterson was no good. He was washed up. He was not the same cornerback anymore. 
that he was with the Minnesota Vikings or even with the Arizona Cardinals. But I do believe that this team would be better off with a younger secondary and they can still possibly get another guy in the NFL draft at that cornerback position. You still have Mika Fitzpatrick at the free safety position. He was beat up a lot this season, suffered a broken hand, suffered a knee injury as well. That's why they put Patrick Peterson at the safety spot. Then, especially when DeMonte Casey went out there and he got suspended for hitting Michael Pittman Jr. late. Those were moves like that 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 were the reason why they had to go out there and basically put Patrick Peterson at safety. So the Steelers went out there and they had a very busy free agency. And they're still going to go out there and they're still going to make some moves. Omar Khan did not sit on his hands. The biggest one is Russell Wilson. How would he look with this team? That's the biggest thing. If Russell Wilson can just come out there and just be a serviceable quarterback with that run game and just be on time on third down, I think you'll be in a better situation. It does come down to coaching. I will say that. This is one of those situations you look at Coach Tomlin, you look at Arthur Smith and say, hey, if this doesn't work out, we may have to move off from Coach Tomlin. And I am going to talk about this right now because I did not forget about what happened over the last couple of years. Randy Fickner was a Mike Tomlin hire decision. Matt Canada was a Mike Tomlin hire decision. Matt Canada should have never been hired in the same with Randy Fickner. If he misses on yet another offensive coordinator, it's not a good look with Coach Tomlin. It is not just good enough for this team to just go out there, make the NFL playoffs, and be one and done. We're done with that. The Steelers have to go out there, make a deep playoff run, and they have to set a precedent in this division. You have to be dominant in this division. I know it's easier said than done. The Cleveland Browns, they have Deshaun Watson, that amazing defense. But like I mentioned before, the Steelers beat them. You can say it was a fluky way of beating them, but they went out there and they beat them regardless. The Ravens are a tough team, but the Steelers have always had their number in the last couple of years. And you look at the Cincinnati Bengals, tough team, but can Joe Burrow stay healthy? So those are a lot of things that you put up in the air. I think the Steelers have a prime shot to go out there and make a deep playoff run. And if they don't, this may be the season they move off of Mike Tomlin because he did not get a contract extension. Not just yet. As I record this video, they did not give this man an extension. And so they're looking at Mike Tomlin right now. Yes, you've never had a losing season. So what? This team has not won a playoff game since 2016. It's time to go out there, win some playoff games, and put all this money that this team has invested to good use. Because it makes zero sense to go out there and go one and done in the playoffs when you're signing guys like Patrick Queen to three-year deals. Where you're basically going out there and signing guys like Russell Wilson, even though it's not for a lot of money. But it's the fact that it takes time and effort to go out there and make these deals. If it comes out with nothing, that's a horrible look on Coach Tomlin. And you don't want to see situations like this either to where the defense, if it's 100% healthy, or they're just missing some of the players for you to go out there and get shredded by guys like Gardner Minshew. Those days are done. And I can go back a year ago as well when Zach Wilson shredded up this defense late in the fourth quarter. You can't have that with these players. Obviously, players have to play. Coaches have to coach. I fully understand that. But it's time for the Steelers to go back into where they deserve to be and that, and not in the championship race, per se, but make but to go out there and make a deep playoff run. And it's going to be tough because it is the AFC. You have teams like the Houston Texans, Baltimore Ravens, Kansas City Chiefs, Buffalo Bills. But at the same time, you have good players on this Steelers team. They're good enough to go out there and win playoff games. If TJ Watt can stay fully healthy, they're going to be a dominant force. And that's the one thing that you always worry about if you are a Steelers fan. Because when, this, when that man misses games, the Steelers can barely win football games. But when he does play, they're a hard team to beat. But let me know in the comment section below, how do you feel about this phrase period with the Steelers? And are they a true playoff contending team? And will they get past the first round for this upcoming season? If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Most importantly, when each and every last one, guys, stay safe, stay positive. Thanks for watching the video, guys. God bless. Peace.